many people would choose the third door? That old ship of Zion. In Genesis chapter 6, starting in verse number 1, let me rehearse this back in your hearing. And it says, it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for what he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Years and we know that's that's the time in which Noah uh, built the ark. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, children to them, the same became what mighty men, which were of old men of renown. I, I want to share, share with you. We often, as we see this picture of the antediluvian world, we often see people as having great stature. And that is absolutely correct. Uh, they were giants back in the antediluvian world. I read a statement that says that Adam was the, was the uh, tallest man that probably was ever created. And he's a little lower than the Son of God. So all y'all need to shout in here. And, then, and, and that we understand they were tall. They had great size back in the day. But I also want to share with you, it wasn't just physical stature that they had. They were mental giants. Oh, I don't get no amens in here. If I don't get no amens, I'm going to preach 20 minutes longer. Y'all better shout in here. Somebody say amen. Look at that. Now you shout. Look at that. Amen. Amen. They not only were physical giants, they were also mental giants. We don't look at that. Um, they use more of their brain than we do. Oh, y'all missed that. Uh, we are told we only use a small percentage of our brain. And people like uh, the other great men who lived here on this earth, they use a little more, but nobody was has been using their whole brain. And, and, and But they were mental giants back in the day. And I want to let you know, that could be good or it could be bad. And we're going to discuss that now. It says here in verse uh, 5, And God saw... That the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was what? Evil continually. Not what they did, but what they thought. Oh, y'all missed that. See, before you do something, you think about it. Their mind was messed up. <laughs> when your mind is messed up, then everything else is going to be messed up. It starts in the mind. That's why the battle for God is over the mind. The, what, what the devil wants is the mind. See, if the devil gets your brain, he gets your hands. If the devil gets your brain, he gets your feet. You walk in the wrong place. Somebody say amen. The battle is not over your hips. The battle is not over your legs. The battle is not over your back, your hands, your toe. The battle is for your brain. Somebody say amen. And it's a vicious battle between God. Who will we allow to control our mind? Somebody say amen. It goes on to say, uh, the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Only thing he thought about or she thought about was bad things. And that's why after thinking about those bad things continually and all the time, you did bad things continually and all the time. And now we're going to come up to the next verse, verse 6. Now you see why God had to do what he did because there was no promise of good. And it repented the Lord that he had made man. Church, look at this now. It repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. Now let me let me get that in the right connotation. A lot of people think that the Bible is saying here 
that God hated that he had made mankind. That's not what it's saying. Let me tell you what it is saying. What it is saying, God says, I hate to destroy that which I have made. Amen. Oh, y'all missed that. I hate to destroy what I have made to live forever. I may made this woman to live forever, but I must destroy thee. That's why I grieved at my heart that I must put an end to civilization. And verse 7, and the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Both man and beast and the creeping things and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made them to be destroyed. Yeah. I added that in. Because that's what this is talking about. Amen. 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 Thank God for verse number 8. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have you all to read that. Thank God that, that verse number 8 comes next. Yeah. It goes, but Noah yeah, found. found grace yeah. Yeah. in the eyesight of the Lord. Somebody yeah. say amen. Yeah. Thank God I don't have to end this on a bad note. Yeah. That's a, the first for one through eight is a bad note. But I want to let you know verse, num, verse number eight tells us that in this foolishness, yeah. in this crazy lifestyle, in this giants, but great giants of sin, we find some individuals who want to serve the Lord. Yeah. And his name is what? Noah and his beautiful family. Somebody say amen. amen. Thank God for verse number eight. That Noah found grace, yes. which is not only in the Old Testament, in the, only in the New Testament, it's also in the Old Testament. Somebody need to shout. Amen. Now I'm ready to talk about these three ships. Yes. Door number one. Door number one is the Titanic. All right. Even the Titanic itself, the film, produced a whopping $300 million in the first month after it came out. There's a mesmerizing, uh, 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 mysterious underpinnings when you look at this thing called the Titanic. It produced $1 billion sales in its first year around the world. One of the first movies to do that. Amen? The, the Titanic has such a allure, a magnetism. It is riveting and it draws people into the plot. Many truths, but probably a whole lot more fairy tales. One reason the film did so well is because people looked at the film one, two, and three times. Well, first of all, the film is about four and a half hours long. I don't get it. But I want to let you know, somebody paid their well-earned money to see it two and three times. As if it was, it was going to change every time. Amen. I want to let you know, uh, that is a magnetism as when it comes down to this event. People, but I want to let you know something, church. The Titanic is not about a ship. All right. It's not about water. But the Titanic is about the way people act. Right. The Titanic is about an attitude that's prevalent. It's about an ideology. It's about uh, 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 a way of life among some people. Um, let me give you some details I think that will be helpful to you. Right. On that Titanic, you had 2,227 people on that boat. Now, I'm going to tell you, this, we, we were way back in the turn of the 1900s. That's a lot of people. Amen. Somebody say Amen. And let me share something about this. These people weren't regular people. These people were rich. No, 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 no. They were, they were downright filthy rich. Somebody say amen. They were loaded with money. These were nobody's on this ship that has less than a million dollars in their pocket. These are some of the richest people in Europe that are present on this ship. On this ship, they have enough life rafts 
for 500 people. You somebody ought to get something there. Hmm. You got 2,227 people, but you don't have enough life raft for 500. Somebody think this ship ain't going down. Somebody say amen. <laughs> it took off on April the 10th, 1912. I want to let you know it went down. 700 people were able to be saved in the lifeboats. You, do you get that number? Amen. It was only intended for 500, but 200 extra people got in the boat. Somebody say amen. 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 Also, 1,522 people perished in those cold, cold waters. They lost their life. Every last one of them were filthy, filthy rich. Church, it's about people. It's about our, our, our attitudes. I want to share something with you that a lady who recently died in the last 10 years, Miss Eva Hart, she was on that ship at the age of seven. She recently died. She overheard a sailor say that even God himself cannot sink this ship. Oh, somebody need to shout out yeah. Even God cannot put this, this ship at the bottom of the sea. She heard a sailor say that. In other words, the Titanic is just one of the items that we have in this world that instead of giving God the, 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 uh, the blessing of, we give, it, we give man and we uplift man. Somebody say amen. amen. It's one of the things in which man points his beautiful hand in the face of God and saying, look what I can do without you. Yeah. It's an attitude that you find prevalent even in 2018. Amen. Oh, y'all don't have to say amen. Yeah. It's a truth. Right. I can do this without you. Yeah. The Tower of Babel is another incident in which men got together and decided, you know what? God may change his mind. He said he wasn't going to send a flood. He gave us a rainbow as a token that he would not send the flood again. But I don't know if he'll send a flood again. I don't trust him. So what I'm going to do is, we're going to build us a city. And in the middle of that city, we're going to build a tower that will be so high that we will make sure that if he sends a flood again, we will be higher than the flood. Now, they know how tall the flood was. So they, they absolutely built and was building on a tower so that if that God sent it another flood or, they, or, they, or, or he changed his mind, they would be able to be up at the top of that uh, tower laughing yeah. at the people, laughing at God. See, that I got you, God. Yeah. What I want to let you know that God says, he said to himself, you know what? I, uh, we, we better stop there. We better reach our Bible. Yeah. God said to himself that we will go down and we will stop this. And, 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 and God did that by confusing the language. Yeah. Amen. And that's why we call it the Tower of Babel. Somebody yeah. say amen. Yeah. But I want to give a, prove a point from this that you need to understand God said that if we don't do something about this, that which they are planning to do, they will do. That's right. So you need to understand, you do not have to be with God and be successful. Oh, y'all missed that. They were going to be successful except God cursed the project. So we have to be careful about the images that we look at. Some of these images are for the fascination of human hearts. God ain't no way in it. The people who built those things didn't even believe in God. Somebody say amen. amen. Some of us love, you know, when I went to New York, I was under the, uh, the um, what's the tall building? I was under the Empire State Building. And you know, the whole bottom of it is like two or three blocks long. And I've never been seen anything like that. So I was walking around like this. 
And I heard somebody pass by say, oh, he ain't from here. <laughs> because they know when you see this every day, it don't, it don't pay, you don't pay no attention to it. Amen? But I want to let you know, that is another image that gives credence to what man has done. Amen? And millions and millions of people come to see that building every year. Even though it is no longer the tallest building in the world, giving man the praise and the honor. And, and people, millions and millions of people go to see the Statue of Liberty. And other uh, things that men have made, men who didn't even love God, men who even despise God, we give a lot of credence to what they do. Somebody say amen. It's an attitude that we have to be careful about. Amen? Amen. The pyramids, millions of people go to the pyramid. But the people who built the pyramids believed in many gods. Right. Yes. And they believe in burying their dead with all that treasure so they'll see it on the other side. Amen. Pyramids are tombstones. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. The speeches and the Great Wall of China, all these things have a human element that that wants to be fulfilled. Amen? Amen. That's door number one. All right. Some of you all would have chosen door number one. No. I have no doubt in my mind. I've seen Let's Make a Deal. And the door you should choose is the one you choose. All right. And you may get what they call a zoink. Somebody say amen. Door number one is a zoink. It appears to be a good door. It appears to be the right door, but it is the wrong door. Door number two. Four days later, on April the 14th, 1512, the, the Titanic is at the bottom of the sea. Four days. It didn't take four days. For this, this monster, the biggest monster ever made by man floating on water to be at the bottom of the sea. My Lord, my Lord. Let me do this here. Door number two is the ark. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm not really sure if you repeat door number two either yet, but we'll see. First of all, let me make some comparison with the Titanic and the ark, and you see which one, which door you would pick. Amen. Okay, the, uh, both of them went on a main voyage. What does that mean? Both of them went on one voyage. One voyage. One voyage. They both went on one voyage. So right now, they're tied. Amen? Amen. Yeah. The, the uh, ark is three stories tall. That's pretty tall. The Titanic is 11 stories tall. Do you know what that means? Some of y'all just chose door number eight. Door number one. You like it because it's tall. Uh -huh. Amen? Yeah. Some of you ladies like tall men. You don't want no short men. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Sometimes you may be surprised. Yeah. The, 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 the R, how much did it cost to get on the R? Yeah. Absolutely free. Yeah. Somebody tell me that's the best price in the world. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. It cost $4,350 to get on the Titanic. That's in 1915. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of money then, and it is sure a lot of money now. Somebody say amen. amen. So, so to get on the ark, to get on the ark, it was absolutely free. But we couldn't get the eight people on there. Come on, y'all need to listen up to me. It's free, but I can't get my eight on it. And here's the one that cost $4,350, and I got 2,000 some people on it. Somebody say amen. 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 So some of you all wouldn't have got on the ark because it was free. For some of you all, it was devalued because it was free. When you saw the high price, this has got to be the best deal. This has got to be the best one. Somebody say amen. amen. So some of y'all would have chose door number one. Well, uh, the, the Titanic 882 feet long. The ark 450 feet long. Almost twice as long. 
the, the Titanic 132,000 ton of pure black milk. Somebody say amen. amen. They think the ark was 50,000 pounds. Some of y'all, you weren't going to get on that ark. You done heard enough. Amen. I'm going to get on the Titanic. Amen. But well, you would have picked the wrong door. You would have picked the wrong door. Amen. Amen. See, so what I'm trying to tell you, it's not always how it looks. It may look better, but it may be worse. It may look superior, but it may be inferior. Amen. And we're going to decide what makes the difference. Both of them only have one void, so you can't you can't make a judgment on this. Hey, the Titanic is made out of iron, and the and the ark is made out of wood. Oh, that lost some of you right there. You gonna get on the one made out of iron? You ain't get on no boat made out of wood. Oh, somebody say amen. Yeah. Now listen, and this is what I love about the Bible. This is what I love about God. He didn't just say wood. He said go for. Amen. Some of you that would have ran you right up on the Titanic. Somebody say amen. You done for the ark. Forget yeah. this. I ain't getting on no boat, no boat made out of wood. Certainly it's made out of gopher wood. You can forget that. That doesn't seem like a winning element. That looks like a loss. Amen. 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 Um the the Titanic had Lifeboats. Amen? Amen. <laughs> the ark didn't have any lifeboats. So some of y'all wouldn't have got on the ark because it didn't have any lifeboats. Oh, y'all missed that. It's just the opposite of what you were thinking. Somebody's going to go. At least they said we, 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 we can meet an emergency. You can say it's not going to go down, but at least you got some lifeboats. So we can meet the emergency if it comes up. If a merchant comes up with the ark, that but they didn't know that the ark itself was a lifeboat. Yeah. The boat itself was the inner tube. The boat itself was the ring. The boat itself was salvation. Yeah. Just being on the boat, you were saved. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the ship, the Titanic sunk. So now, door number one is a zonk. Somebody say amen. amen. And door number two, which represents the art, stayed afloat. Okay. Door number one sunk on a clear, calm night. Went down to the bottom on a clear because if you know the history, it ran into an iceberg. Yeah. On a clear day. Yeah. On a clear night. Yeah. But check this out. The ark made out of gopher wood, I want to remind you. Sails through the worst storm in the history of the world. There has never been a storm as bad as the flood. And it's and it went through it unharmed. Yes, a storm a hundred times worse than Katrina. Jesus. Going through. Come on. Because God was in control. Yes, right. Some of y'all now are at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> in the Titanic because you chose door number one. Come on, Somebody else in here is still floating because you chose door number two. But door number two looks inferior. But let me share something with you. You've been sold European mess. Right. I got to say it like that because I got to always watch where I am. See, European is, if you don't come in first, then there is no other option. But see, with God's program, all you have to do is finish. It don't matter when you start. It don't matter if you come in 100. You, as long as you finish, you make it. He that do it to the end shall be saved. European is how big a thing is, how blessed it is. Right. That's how come some of you all are seeking your desires in other churches because the other churches are huge. They got three services. They got 15,000 members. They got five preachers and 200 elders. But I want to let you know, a, a person, three people under a tent can have just as much truth or more truth than that. But you judge about how big it is. Somebody say amen. amen. But I want to say this to you, Fairfield. You 
You've been jumping on yourself over the last so many years because of your side. But I want to let you know that dynamite comes in small packages. Amen. You better understand what you got. Amen. Not trying to get the headaches that other people got. Amen. Somebody say amen. You in a little bitty house. But at least you can take care of your bills and work in your job. Somebody else is sweating bullets because they in a bigger house than you. Amen. You want the same headaches they got. Somebody say amen. amen. You judge things by first place. You judge things by, by how big it is. And that, is, that determines for you uh, uh, how the, 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 if you look at the ark and you look at the Titanic, there is no comparison. Amen. One is clearly looks inferior. Yeah. But you missed something. God directed every bit of how the ark was going to go. Yes. He said, how many sockets? All right. He said, what kind of wood? Somebody amen. say amen. amen. He says, he gave the length. That wasn't Noah's doing. That, God said, this is how long it'll be. Glory he says, right. this is how tall it's going to be. Yeah. He determined all of those things. Yes. And I want to let you know, whatever is the end Glory. result, it is the right thing. Right. I don't care how it looks. I don't care what it's made out of. Yeah. God endorsed it. Somebody say amen. amen. And guess what? It floats on and makes it to the end. Yes, One was superior, but I declare to you, it was not inferior, but it was superior. And that was God's. Amen. 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 This is what you have to understand. God uses, help me Jesus. Help me to land this ship now. Amen. God uses, come on, Sister Moore, help me land this ship. God uses simple, plain, ordinary people. Amen. It ain't these big timers that gonna get us where we need to go. It's the plain brother and sister. It's the regular old Joe that God can use it. The people with all the PhDs and all of the knowledge and all of the beauty and all the handsome, they do very little for Jesus. But it's the regular old lady who does the best she can on her fixed income. They help pull the church through. Somebody say amen. And don't you forget it. The church is spun around by those who are on fixed income. The person with the big job, he can he, he got so much indebtedness, he can't support the church. Oh, we got quiet up in this camp. We got quiet in here then. So it doesn't, sometimes it appears to be one way, but it's not like that. And we gotta ask God to help us to see the way it is. Amen. Therefore, you got a blessing here and you don't even know it. You got a blessing and you don't know it. God uses simple, yes. plain, ordinary people. Yes. And guess what? That's most of us. Amen. That's me. Yes. Amen. 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 Door number three. That old ship was on. That ship is passing through. Yes. It passed through. I saw it for the first time in 1974. Jesus. And when I saw it, I jumped on it. Yes. Gave my life to Jesus. Yes, Lord. And has been good for me ever since. Amen. Amen. But I want to let you know every now and then you need to do a refresher course. Oh, uh, a couple of years ago, that ship keeps coming on. Oh, Lord. And you need to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Even when you're doing great things for God, doing huge things for God, that ship keeps coming around. And sometimes you think it's the ship is for somebody else. But the ship is really for you. So two years ago, and I'm not ashamed to tell you, I jumped on that ship again. And I was re-baptized. By that time, I had baptized about 6,000 people all over the country. But that didn't make no difference. You don't get no credit for that. You don't go to heaven and say, Lord, don't you remember I'm the one? No, no, no. I need to know, did you do what I told you to do? 
I, I, I wear to save you, but I need you to do what I ask you to do. I need not you to go on your reputation. I need you to go on the word. Let me tell you right now, that old ship of Zion is the word. It's that special word that you get. It's that word that you hear that brings you to repentance. That word that you hear that makes you want to live right. Well, I want to let you know, church, that that old ship of Zion is passing through Fairfield today. It's coming through Fairfield right now. And it's, it, 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 it's asking you to jump on board. Just so happened our Sabbath school lesson, Paul said, unless you remain in the ship, you will be lost. Once we jump out the ship, jump in the ship, jump out the ship, we got to make sure that when the ship comes through, I'm on it. Okay. I don't mind telling you what I needed to do because maybe that will encourage you. Because I have to make sure at the end of the day that I'm saved. Yeah. All these other accolades will do me no good. Right. At the end of the day, I must pass the ball. Right. I must be saved into God's eternal kingdom. Right. So on this day, we are open up the doors of the church today. Right. And you're going to say on this day, you're going to come forward and give your life, heart, mind, and soul to Jesus. Right. Is that one here today? Will you do it today? Will you do it today? Will you stand for Jesus today? Is that one who would do it today? You didn't plan to do it today? That's awesome. Because if you do it, it's not you. It, it will be the Lord. He wants you to come back home today. He wants you to reunite today. Will you take advantage of it today? Or will you do as you always do, make excuses and go back the same way? Will someone stand today for Jesus? On my left, on my right. It may even mean baptism. Is it like me? It may mean rebaptism. You're not going to let anything get in between you and God. Is there one here today? Oh, I already know. I already know somebody's going to come back today. I already know it. I know it. I have been assured of that. I just want to know who it is because I don't know that. Who will stand for Jesus today? You've wasted too much time. You've wasted too much energy. Well, guess what? It's not going to change. Therefore, you must change. Nothing will change. It will never go right for you until you might make it right with him. This word that you heard, some of you heard it for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, and you have not done what you need to do. When will you do it? Do it on this day. Rebuke the devil. The devil says, don't you move, don't you move. And you rebuke him in the name of Jesus. You need to stand to your feet right now. And you need to do it in the name of Jesus. Is that one? Is that one? Is that one? This is for everybody. I tell everybody I've been places and I hear the musician playing and then all of a sudden I don't hear no music playing. He done jumped up and said, hey, I got to be saved too. This is for anybody. I don't care who you are, where you are. You're going to you gonna have, to, uh, you gonna have to talk to the Lord. He's going to ask you, did you do what I told you to do? Yes or no? No, I didn't. Okay. Is there one for Jesus today?